see what are the important articles of today so the first article which is important is morphed freedom the title of that is this article is morphed freedoms so friends here i will not be going into much detail of the article because it is ultimately uh, the the self reading that helps you people it will be totally misguiding or misleading if i say that i will i will complete your uh, uh, editorial uh, on my own i will just tell you what is the crux crux of the editorial and what should be the issues that you must be uh, th that uh, that you must keep uh, keep in mind while reading this article so the crux of the article is about the freedom of expression so you might have recently heard that a, a, a woman leader from uh, uh, west bengal uh, that that was the leader uh, she was the leader of uh, she is the leader of uh, uh, youth wing of uh, bjp in west bengal she was uh, uh, detained by the police for his uh, for her alleged sharing of a morphed image of uh, west bengal cm so after that she was uh, detained by the police and uh, and this caused uh, uh, the intervention of the judiciary she moved to the magistrate which uh, which uh, uh, kind of uh, legitimized the uh, the, uh, the the action of uh, police but later on uh, the accused moved to the supreme court and uh, the in, uh, supreme court granted her the bail uh, but uh, but the supreme court asked asked her to apologize to uh, apologize in written form uh, to the west bengal cm so this article is uh, about this uh, event so basically we have to look uh, uh, into this article from the uh, angle of uh, freedom of expression so friends uh, the the point that the author has been raising is that uh, that the, uh, the, the, uh, the issue that uh, that that has triggered the case against the accused uh, it has it, uh, it was registered under under section 66 of a of in information technology act so friends uh, for your uh, information let me tell you that this uh, act uh, this uh, section section 66 a uh, has been declared un constitutional by the supreme court way back in 2015 that means the uh, supreme court had declared that uh, section 66 a cannot be uh, used uh, in 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 its present form so that's why this this was declared unconstitutional so the question here the author wants to raise is that, uh, that then that if a particular section of an act has been declared unconstitutional then how the police can use that section so clearly this shows that uh, the police at the local level don't know they are not aware of this thing or might they might be they they uh, they are not acting objectively or they are acting under the pressure another thing is that uh, uh, that author says uh, the case also was registered under section 67a so this section 67a of it act what this section says uh, it says that it can be used when when there is a kind of a transmission of a sexually explicit material in electronic form so certainly the sharing of the uh, the morphed photograph of west bengal cm that is mamta banerjee certainly it was not a sexually explicit material and it it uh, it, it uh, how the how then police can invoke this section so these are the two points that the author is raising another thing is that the author wants to say okay, if if the, uh, as the case uh, if it is uh, looked uh, if it if, if it is looked into detail then it uh, it it uh, more or less relates to the defamation case so if there is defamation then uh uh, how how the cyber crime police station can handle that this case and uh, where whereas its subject matter was more or less relating to defamation another thing that the author wants to raise is the the uh, the power of the police that is uh, when the defamation case has been filed by third party and not by the person who has been defamed then that then can the uh, police proceed uh, when third party files a defamation case whether there is any procedure in the in that case or whether there is any kind of we can say uh, uh, effective mechanism if if the if the third party files the case and if not the uh, a person who is defamed is not involved in the case and in this case also the author wants to say if uh, as the 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 act that is it act has been uh, misused in a balatant manner it has been totally uh, used out of context so uh, supreme court should not have asked to uh, 
the uh, ask the accused to uh, give apology in written form because it is unwarranted but supreme court continued with it, with it so these are the major points that are raised by this article so you have to keep in mind uh, the act that is it act and uh, uh, section 66a of it which was declared unconstitutional and also section 67a and in which instance it can be used in the powers of the police and the power of the authority and uh, certainly here the other question that must be uh, highlighted is the uh, kind of uh, 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 approach the court should adopt in such cases whether court should ask for apology, is, uh, uh, apology or not so such, these are the things and next article is uh, uh, your uh, the heading of this article is all out at sea so this article friends relates to the uh, enhanced engagement of Indian Navy in the Indian Ocean region and it uh, and beyond Indian Ocean region so let's see what are the details of this article I will not go into much detail I will uh, uh, just tell you what the editorials crux says so the editorial the author uh, uh, starts by saying that K India, India's uh, Indian Navy's engagement is increasing in Indian Ocean uh, for example it is conducting bilateral exercises with nations like US Japan Australia France and also major other activities are are being undertaken by the Indian Navy so certainly friends let me tell you that uh, the different exercises that the Indian armed forces take with uh, with, uh, with other other parties whether they are bilateral exercises or uh, multilateral exercises their names are very important so please do, do read them uh, for the purpose of your problems it, they could be asked in prelims and uh, sec uh, the second thing is the author wants to say ki, what what is the trigger behind this uh, enhanced engagement so certainly uh, the, uh, the author places the onus on the China which is increasing its naval footprint in Indian Ocean so China has been uh, uh, frequently China's warships and its submarines have, have had been frequently seen in Indian Ocean uh, in the recent past and also China is increasing its investments uh, for example it has Belt and Road initiative in which it's it is building roads railway networks and port infrastructure in different uh, regions of the world so here the, uh, the it, 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 it has also increased its investments uh, in uh, uh, in Indian Ocean region for example the development of Gwadar port in uh, Pakistan and the development of uh, the Colombo uh, the Colombo port in Sri Lanka so certainly uh, there is also a military base of China in Djibouti now so uh, this shows that uh, the, uh, the presence of Chinese is increasing so as but the Chinese say okay, we are just doing this for the purpose of our Belt and Road initiative but India and uh, many strategic analysts say uh, okay, the, the the investments uh, of the China also uh, also carry the strategic angle with them and they have the strategic aims also so in this context uh, the regional navies are also intensifying activities so certainly they have also want to get noticed so nations like Bangladesh Myanmar Pakistan and, and Sri Lanka are increasingly participating in different exercises and certainly uh, Pakistan is being uh, uh, kind of uh, promoted by China to enhance its naval powers naval naval footprint in Indian Ocean region which is certainly an issue of concern for India uh, which has uh, uh, which has a major security threat from Pakistan so reports also just that China is also planning to expand its logistic base in the uh, in the Indian Ocean region for known peacekeeping missions that is it could uh, it could uh, uh, it could be uh, doing planning to expand its uh, logistic base for the purpose of, purpose of operational capabilities so uh, it is also suggest that reports are also there uh, that uh, China is kind of uh, uh, undertaking a detailed study uh, of uh, uh, on how how the China can uh, can can sustain its long-term operations uh, naval exploration uh, 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 operations in the Indian Ocean region so this uh, the author says it, it raises the possibility of operational overlap with the Indian Navy's area of interest so certainly Indian Navy about Indian Navy it is well known fact that India is a well uh, 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 Indian Navy is a well a potent regional maritime force and uh, it has not just uh, participated in uh, different security exercises but it has also undertaken various uh, other operations for example in the field of uh, anti-piracy operations of, uh, of the coast of Somalia and then there is uh, humanitarian assistance and also uh, disaster management 
so in that case also indian navy has remained active however uh, but but the author says ki the indian navy's uh, uh, resources are limited and its assets are limited and this uh, limit over its resources and assets has forced it has forced indian navy to look for other players uh, to to invest resources in joint security mechanisms for example it is uh, looking for other players like france and uh, your uk britain and uh, usa uh, so that uh, it can increase the joint security mechanism so that the rule based order could be ensured in indian ocean region however the author says uh, the indian indian navy is uh, is uh, uh, in, uh, is is willing but uh, but the strategic response is not that much positive from other nations but certainly uh, author also says ke uh, uh, of late recently the china's presence uh, has been decreasing so it has been uh, because low and low uh, uh, warships and submarines have been seen of china in indian ocean region but the author warns against this uh, this uh, uh, kind of we can say early conclusion because the author says that the presence can be still there because china is increasingly for Focus, focusing on stealthier submarines that is it it is uh, uh, its technology is enabling china submarine uh, submarines to be more quieter than ever the, uh, this and this author says raises the possibilities possibility of china china submarines uh, that uh, of, uh, uh, of china submarine being uh, in indian ocean region and they might be operating and uh, india must uh, uh, increase its efforts to to kind of we can say oversee the security mechanism in indian ocean region Uh, but uh, also the author says ki uh, though th the the number uh, of appearances of in, uh, china's warships and submarines is decreasing but however this policy is not changing in the context of west west asia and africa where uh, china is investing in various countries uh, and uh, Uh, the countries are for example tanzania kenya and sudan and mozambique so the basic purpose of investing there is uh, because the the, uh, the energy and the major resource uh, resources shipments of china emerge from this region and uh, china certainly wants to uh, put itself in a strong footing on a strong level so that uh, no no kind of external threat uh, can can uh, can adversely affect its uh, energy security or its uh, resource the resource shipments so So China is uh, kind of undertaking a proactive role in Indian Ocean region. In response, uh, India India is also uh, kind of uh, noticing the things and and is uh, uh, and now has the sort naval logistical access to fr uh, French bases in Reunion Island and also in Djibouti. But yet India's posture, the author concludes, is tactically proactive and strategically defensive. Uh, the author says we are just focusing on risk management rather than a proactive approach because. Because uh, risk, we are focusing on risk management uh, with the, with limited approach to shape events in littoral Asia. So the the author in the end concludes that uh, that what India is doing. is is only from the angle of risk management that is uh, managing the risk that that emerges but not uh, it is not adopting that approach which could shape the very uh, in initial events in the littoral asia so this the author wants to conclude so this is about uh, all this article so it was quite lengthy and uh, the third and the last article of today that is important is the need for judicial restraint so this uh, 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 article has been uh, written by a supreme court uh, a for the supreme court judge that is markande karju which is a quite controversial judge because of his uh, often uh, uh, often statements that he issues over social media and uh, Uh, the, and, and there is one more author writing with along with him, and they are writing basically for the for, for the, on, on the issue of judicial activism and judicial restraint. So, friends, you might have uh, heard in uh, news that uh, uh, sometimes uh, various commentators say Supreme Court is uh, uh, is becoming more active. Uh, it, it must and it must re retain uh, in its limits because there is a doctrine of separation of powers which puts the three organs that is executive. legislature and the judiciary in their own limits but the but the but the many many uh, commentators say that judiciary is uh, increasing its activity and uh, 
here the authors start by saying that there are two schools of jurisprudence that is one is positivist school and other is sociological school so what the positivist school says it says that uh, that the judiciary and the judges must exercise restraint and they must follow the law uh, which which has been laid down by the legislatures so legislators various legislators whether or parliament or that uh, they may be state assemblies so here the positivist school argues that uh, that there must be uh, adherence by the judges to the law uh, without going into the uh, in, into the kind of merit of that law except in rare circumstances and other school is sociological school uh, which which kinds of which ki which is a kind of school which gives uh, wide discretionary powers uh, to judges to interpret law in their own manner and to even frame uh, laws uh, while giving judgment so this uh, this is basically a, a school which is closer to judicial activity activism and here the authors argue that that supreme court of india is following the sociological school uh, for example uh, it, ha uh, it has collegium system which is nowhere written in the constitution but th this system uh, is the is the is the procedure through which the uh, uh, the judges in the higher judiciary is, are appointed so certainly there is no law but the collegium system has uh, came into form by second and third judges case so it is a kind of law which has uh, given uh, given a shape to the procedure through which uh, judges could be appointed uh, can be appointed to supreme court or high court and also authors say that uh, in 2015 the supreme court declared national judicial appointment commission unconstitutional which was in fact uh, uh, kind of framed by the parliament with its majority so also uh, uh, a, a few years back the supreme court limited the number of uh, hours for firecrackers in national capital region that is new delhi so here the authors say that th this is a kind of judicial activism and uh, in which judiciary tends to frame laws uh, frame laws and in this context the author says ke, that there is a doctrine of separation of powers and judiciary has no right to frame the laws and it, it and it must exercise restraint and uh, and it uh, in in fact the authors are, are arguing in favor of positivist school which uh, which uh, follows the strict and literal uh, literal adherence to law made by the legislators so the authors say ki whatever may be the law that that is enacted by the parliament the uh, the judges must follow these laws and uh, the judgments must be pronounced in accordance with these laws but uh, uh, here uh, i will like to i would like to add a, a concluding remark here that this is the very judge which uh, which has said that he doesn't believe in democracy or for that matter in parliamentary democracy because the the, par, uh, the legislatures which are which are elected they are kind of imposed on you you have no kind of uh, freedom to choose uh, to choose uh, the person of your own choice because uh, you are uh, the, uh, the parties give tickets to those individuals only which are prominent and you are kind of imposed by the uh, by the, uh, you are imposed uh, uh, leaders are imposed on you so here the author says that uh, okay, they must follow the law that is laid down by the legislature so there is a conflict of statements uh, in in the in the uh, in in, in the, the, there is a conflict of statement of in 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 the uh, articulations of judge so this is all about for today's video if you like this video then please do share it uh, and do it like it and also ensure that you subscribe to our channel and thank you have a very nice day and lastly this is our contact number that is 89684264810 and this is our email id that is gyes21 at the at gmail dot com so here is our uh, public telegram channel that is the link of which has been given here uh, i will also also give the link in the uh, uh, description box so you can join our telegram channel you can also mail or contact us so uh, for your information we also have a test series for the purpose of 2020 aspirants and uh, if you are willing to join then uh, we can share the timetable with you and in fact timetable is uploaded on our te uh, telegram channel uh, uh, that, that the link of which has been given here uh, uh, at the bottom end so thank you friends have a very nice day